Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. Welcome to another educational video of WikiHow. Today's video is how to upgrade Nerf guns. Nerf makes a wide variety of different guns that fire foam darts. These toys are great for young children, but for serious Nerf enthusiasts, customized guns are a lot more exciting. Nerf guns can be upgraded in terms of both appearance and function. Using these instructions, you can bring a gun to your next Nerf battle that not only shoots farther and faster, but also has a unique look that you designed yourself. Now when WikiHow starts offering you mod advice, you know you're in for a treat. But maybe they're not so bad, as this article has been viewed over 26,000 times and has an approval rating of 74%. But when it comes to serious upgrades, especially in the cosmetic department, let's face it, I'm not your guy. Which is why I called in an expert, Mr. Nathan. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Nathan, and sometimes I build cool blasters. So Mr. Nathan, are you ready to learn some new modding techniques? As a matter of fact, Brett, no. I've seen this show before, and I'm relatively certain that what we're going to learn today isn't worth learning. Well, with success stories such as, the article made sense and helped me, I can't imagine there being any questionable mod suggestions in this article. Alright, that's uh, more power to you. I mean, I wouldn't get your hopes up, though. So grab a screwdriver, a Dremel, and a can of paint. This and you probably want to grab paint. sandpaper, masking tape, exacto knife. But depending on the, the level of the cosmetic This is how to upgrade Nerf guns, according to WikiHow. Method 1. Upgrading your gun's appearance. Number 1. Design your gun. Take some time to think about what kinds of changes you want to make to the appearance of your Nerf gun. Do you want to change the colors, the shape, or just add some minor customizations to personalize your gun? You may want to make a sketch or two to plan out your modifications. Well, that really depends on exactly what you're going for. I mean, if you're if you're upgrading the appearance as far as uh, minimizing to reduce bulk, or you're adding a stock to a blaster that didn't have a stock, adding a um, different firing option, you want to underbarrel something, master key. It really depends on what your actual goal with the build is, depending on what you actually need to look for in uh, planning things out. Use your imagination. There are many different modifications you could make, depending on the look you want for the amount of work you are willing to put in. If you need some inspiration, there are many websites where people have posted their favorite Nerf gun modifications, sometimes with tips for creating similar looks. The extent of the changes you want to make will determine the supplies you need and how extensive the project will be. Nowadays, yeah, there are tons of sites with ideas and inspiration. Definitely. I mean, usually when I start a project, I'll usually do a quick uh, Google search and search, you know, something similar to what I'm trying to build and just seeing if somebody else has already done it so I know kind of what to expect, you know, get uh, ideas or at least have, have a warning for things that I need to look out for, things I need to avoid. You know, check Reddit a lot for different things people are working on. I follow people on Instagram who seem to be building cool stuff. I'd get a lot of ideas and just uh, inspiration and just, you know, seeing a lot of cool things there. Number two, make body modifications. Depending on the type of gun you're starting with, you may wish to add components or even remove parts to create a more appealing look. Gee, this sounds right up your alley, Mr. Nathan. For example, some Nerf guns have large stocks that serve little or no function. If you have such a gun, you might want to saw off the stock to create a smaller gun. Okay, that is a first. When was the last time you heard someone complaining about a Nerf stock being too large? I, I can't say I've ever heard of anybody saying a stock was too large. I mean, as far as long, I know that, uh, like the Firefly, to me, is a bit large height-wise and just kind of bulky, uh, but if you consider the Firefly is a stock that shoots things, essentially, then uh, you really can't knock it too hard. Shh. But as far as, uh, yeah, I don't know why you'd want to cut one off. On the other hand, you might wish to add visual elements to your gun. You can use super glue, model glue, or rubber cement to add anything from parts of other Nerf guns, small items from toy, craft, or hardware stores, or even to custom-created decorative elements, such as the foam rubber blade added to a Nerf Maverick, shown here. Beautiful. Again, think creatively about additions you might want to make. The possibilities are endless. Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, possibilities are endless. I, I don't know why you'd want to use rubber cement on anything. The model glue kind of concerns me, too, just the nature of how model glue works. I guess work with what you have. Uh, but yeah, you can you can add blaster pieces or, I mean, you get like the prop building people, steampunk people that like glue all sorts of bits and bobs on there. You can pretty much do whatever you want. If the possibilities are so endless, why is this kid so upset? Honestly, the cat on his shirt looks more interested in modding a Nerf gun. Seriously, what is with that cat? That is weird. 
maybe cats are just much more open to the customization and personalization of plastic toys. You mod the fire strike. It's really simple. It's based on a good design. Please. Hey, you want to mod a blaster? Yeah. You want to do that? Come on. Mod this fire strike. Come on. Mod the fire strike. Mod it. Mod it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good boy. Uh, no, I take that back. Number three, spray paint your gun. Many serious Nerf enthusiasts like to create custom looks for their guns with full body paint jobs. This can be as simple as sanding the gun down and spray painting it with the color you like. Well, definitely. I mean, painting would be essentially the easiest way to, you know, really personalize something. And especially if you are doing integration or any kind of uh, radical cosmetic modifications, you're going to be scratching up the plastic and you'll probably want to paint it anyway. You must first sand all the glossy surfaces down to make certain the spray paint will stick. Disassembling the gun, or at least removing the larger parts and painting them individually, will allow for a more thorough paint job. To get a multicolored look, you can paint your gun one color, let it dry, then tape over with masking tape the areas you want to remain that color. Then paint the gun with another color of spray paint, let it dry, remove the tape. Hmm. You know, that actually doesn't sound like half bad advice. Well, yeah, actually, that sounds fairly reasonable. I mean, uh, there's a little, more, uh, a little more involved than that, but at least they're not incorrect. But I'm still a bit confused how this person is spray painting very specific parts blue on a nearly all black hammer shot without using the method they just mentioned. Well, you see, Brett, you introduced yourself as a novice to the uh, cosmetic side of things when you introduced this video. So you, I can understand you wouldn't understand, you know, the whole, uh, the more finer points of really expert paint application. So, you know, stick around. Maybe by the end of this wiki, how you'll uh, be able to pull that off. Number four. Add details. Once your paint is dry, you can further customize your design with a paintbrush or permanent marker. With a model brush and paints, you can add highlights to give your gun a metallic look if desired. So these are the highlights they're showing off. What is going on with that? Stars and polka dots and what the heck is that on the magwell of the recon? Literally the Death Eaters are close by. Gee whiz. To each their own. Method 2. Upgrading your gun's function. Number 1. Make a dual magazine. A quick upgrade that can help you reload much faster is the creation of a dual magazine. If your Nerf gun uses a clip-style magazine, you can tape two of them together with one upside down. When you run out of ammunition, you can just flip it over and keep firing without having to locate a new clip or refill the old one. Ah, uh, back when I first had a recon, I actually did this with two six-round magazines because the next best option was a super clip. Yeah. There's some old nerf for ya, super clips. But this required way less ingenuity. That is a rather uh, odd looking roll of duct tape. Duct tape. Duct tape 101. Right. Duct tape. LOL. Number two, upgrade your ammo. You can make your nerf gun more accurate and powerful by weighting your foam darts. Uh oh. You can use fishing weights, BB pellets, or even small rocks to weight your ammunition. Just find some that are the right size to fit snugly inside your darts. Apply a small drop of hot glue and push the weight down the small opening at the end of each dart. What? And I, I can understand the fishing weights and the BBs to be, uh, you know, quantified fairly easily as far as, you know, keeping things consistent. But they're really recommending you go out to the driveway and pick up rocks and put on your darts. Ugh. Absolutely brilliant. But seriously, guys, don't actually do this. Uh, hot glue domes are one thing. This is something else. Number three, increase your gun's range and power. If your Nerf gun uses a spring or springs to fire darts, you can increase your range dramatically by putting in more powerful springs. Take the gun apart and remove the springs. A 20 pound spring in a similar size to the one original to the gun will give you much more firepower. Although you may need to reinforce the body of your gun with some PVC pipe as the additional force can make the body fall apart. Oh, wait. Wait a second. 20 pounds? Okay. 9 kilograms. Okay, that that's a little more reasonable. What are they doing with the PVC? And I'm pretty sure they're not doing that to that Maverick. That is an excellent question because, ironically, I don't think that Maverick has any spring mods done to it. Instead, that's just the uh, Penny mod. Classic. For advanced nerf modifiers, you can further increase your range by replacing the barrel with a brass tube and by removing the air restrictors that limit how much air can pass through the barrel. Specific details for these tasks will vary depending on your gun, 
but you can find instructions online for most newer guns. Okay, that's a very simplified way of saying it, but it's not technically incorrect. And that's actually it for both sections. Quite short in my opinion. Which leaves us, though, the very important community Q&A. I am an 11-year-old. I spray paint my guns regularly, but what other easy things can I do? Upgrade your spring and try an AR removal. You could also try integrating two guns into each other. Okay, I mean, that, that works for, uh, you know, the AR removal works for, I suppose, older blasters, and I don't really know what your age has to do with anything. I mean, it really depends on more your skill set and your abilities and what you're willing to try and what you're willing to practice at. I know a lot of modders younger than myself that have done some very impressive work. Don't let your age deter you from that. The sooner you can start tinkering, the better you'll be. Can I use electrical tape to design my Recon CS6? Yes, but it may peel off quickly or leave a sticky residue if you choose to remove it. But why would you really want to put it on there in the first place? I mean, I'm, I'm not really sure what you're going at there. Um, uh, okay. How do I modify my Nerf guns? You can add a spring if it is a pump gun, or you can replace the motor and batteries if it is a flywheel. You know, and aside from the last step in this article, for being titled How to Upgrade Nerf Guns, there's not a whole lot of actual modding going on. Can my team have just two people? Yes, but if the other team has significantly more people, you're at a large disadvantage. Okay, that seems a bit obvious. I believe someone posted in the wrong article. How do I upgrade my Nerf guns on a budget? Put a few layers of Teflon or electrical tape under the O-ring in the plunger. Uh, it's a bit uh, old school. I mean, anymore they encourage you to use appropriately sized O-rings and leave it free floating. Uh, as far as recommendations on a budget, just throwing weird springs in, taking springs out of other junk blasters and putting them in. What is the uh, toilet paper roll holder? Uh, supposedly some of those have a good spring in them for something, but I've never done it personally. What is the best gun for a beginner to modify? Probably a hammer shot or any other hammer action blaster. All you need to do is replace the spring in the grip. Really, for that matter, it'd be just as easy to upgrade the spring in any kind of uh, single shot pistol or for that matter, like a retaliator, you just pull the end cap off, loosen up the two back screws, slide the old spring out, slide the new one in, put it back together. Best for a beginner would be something simple. I would go for, you know, the single shot pistols kind of thing, something with a very simple operating system so there's fewer things to lose, fewer things to break. Totally. My first mods were actually on night finders, which are easy to open and understand, so I would recommend those. What can I do to customize my Nerf Elite Fire Strike? It's not very customizable, but I'd recommend trying a paint job, iron sight for the tactical rail, or light spring. Get creative. But apparently Mr. Wiki How Contributor isn't really thinking outside the box much. I mean, if you get a fire strike, there's a, actually a lot of things you could do. I've seen people integrate a, a triad or a jolt underneath the barrel where the light and the dart holders are. I've seen people replace the light itself with an LED or a, a laser and you know, upgrade the electrical components there. I've seen people just cut that whole bottom part off and really streamline the blaster so it's easier to holster and a little more nimble and lightweight. I've seen people use uh, uh, brass breeches on there and put a hole in the side for feeding short darts into. So there's actually, uh, there's actually a lot of options for a night finder depending on what exactly your goals are with it. And last but not least, there are three unanswered questions that need our expertise. How do you take out the spring? Take out the spring. I actually have seen where somebody just took a Tech 3 and just burned it until there's just a pile of ash and a spring. So we got the spring out. That works. Please send me that video. I tried modifying my Nerf gun by spray painting, but the moving parts peel the paint off after about three uses. Is there any way to stop this from happening? Well, the short answer would be, don't paint the moving parts. Are there any ways in which I can modify my Nerf gun without taking it apart? Uh, you're certainly limited. I mean, you're looking at some of the uh, 3D printed kits, some of the slip-on barrel things that you can get for uh, hammer shot, double strike. Just about everything is going to involve either opening it up to access the internals or you know, taking internal internals out, so not a whole lot you can do. I'm honestly not sure if they mean modify in terms of performance or modify in terms of cosmetics. I'm assuming the former. Uh, power stocks with mag-fed blasters, that's one option. Um, rubber bands on the back of Nightfinder Fire Strike models, that's also a quick and cheap option. Yeah, you're pretty limited, sorry. And that will do it for how to modify Nerf guns according to WikiHow. It's actually not the most perplexing article out there. There are certainly some parts that 
give the unique WikiHow feel. Well, in all things considered, I mean, it is a WikiHow article, but at least this time it seems to be uh, harmless for the most part. I mean, there's been some rather ridiculous uh, articles you've read to us where you really wonder what the heck they're thinking. Here, everything is often vague or slightly outdated. It's a good stepping stone. It's good, you know, you can read this as a beginner and at least have a kind of an idea before you move into the stuff that actually makes sense and actually tells you how to do things. A huge thank you, of course, to Mr. Nathan for helping me out with this. You know where to find him, but a link to his channel will be in the description below. Thanks for having me on, Brett. It's nice to hang out for a little bit. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you later.